Good afternoon and welcome to the 2012 series of the Telematics Presentations for Life Sciences. I'm Lorraine Kuhn and with me my co-presenter. I'm Carlin Oppold and um, I think today we're welcoming also the Northern Cape. Yes, and it's fantastic. On the screen here on our right we can see all the schools um, coming in. So welcome to everybody, but let's get started without any further ado. And our topic for today is genetics with the main components being genetic crossings, polygenic inheritance, and abnormal meiosis. Carlin, let's get started with our first slide. Yes, and I think it's important that we remind our grade 12 learners that these are not the only components of genetics, Lorraine, yes. but these are only some that we have selected that we think mm. is problematic. Yeah, it's unfortunately that we can't do everything in the curriculum, so remember, while you go through this year's series of telematics presentations, that what we do here is not the only work that you have to know. But we are dealing with the most problematic issues. And yes, please feel free to ask your questions. And uh, right in the beginning, we don't have time to answer silly comments, So, but come with your questions. You're welcome, and we will answer as far as possible. Right. I think the first and most important thing that we find is that learners do find um, terminology very problematic. And before you can understand any genetic crossing, you must know these terms before we go any further. Homozygous, and that is why we have selected something for you to show you that we're looking at the genotype as well as the phenotype. Now here you can see the phenotype very easily. We look at the color purple, that which is visible, that which you can see. Mm. On the genotype, it's a presentation of the genes that you have inherited or some organism has inherited from both parents, which is represented by either some letters. And here you see homozygous means two of the same. In this instance, it's two capital P's. And here you see at the bottom also homozygous, which is two small P's. But the same homozygous and when there's a difference in the two, where the one is a capital and the one is a small letter, it is heterozygous. In other words, two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles will mean that the individual is homozygous for that characteristic. And a dominant allele paired with a recessive allele, then heterozygous. And it's easy to remember. Think of genotype, genetic combination. And phenotype will then be what you see in the external appearance. What is visible, what is not hidden, such as the genes. And talking about dominant and recessive alleles, and with these phenotypes that they show here, they can easily see that the dominant allele in this instance is purple because the dominant allele will always come uh, um, in the phenotype. It will, be, it will be visible and it will also mask the recessive allele here, as you can see, there is um, the, the recessive one is a white allele, and you can't see it in the phenotype, which means that the dominant allele, which is represented by a capital letter, will mask the presence of the um, um, recessive mm. allele. And just a tip, um, the moment you see a recessive characteristic when it's visible in the phenotype, you can know without any doubt that that individual is homozygous for that recessive characteristic. And that means it must have both recessive alleles. Yes. Right. Then we've got um, another example of how inheritance is done. Just the moment that you do a crossing where you have to use a Punnett diagram because this is really what we have on the screen now. Remember that we have the male gametes on the left and the female gametes on the top, regardless of what books or anybody says, your males on the left and your female gametes on the right. And we'll get back to this later when we do a monohybrid crossing. Yes. Okay. It's important that you are able to do a monohybrid crossing. It's important that you know how the one generation um, passes, transfers its characteristics to the next generation. And once again, terminology. The first generation that we start with is the P1 generation. The parental generation, in other words, the first parents that we start with. Their first offspring 
will be the F1, or the first filial generation. In other words, the F1 are the children of the P1, so to speak. And if the F1 is interbred, then we have the F2 generation. Just take care. F2 only when F1 individuals are interbred. The moment you bring in an outsider, you cannot have F2. So it's P1, F1 and F2. And Lorraine, what learners normally forget is when they use the F1 offspring as a second set of parents, the F1 becomes the P2 to give us the F2. Yes. Right. Right, we're going to look at certain um, of these terminology again so that we can look at when we have different versions of the genes. We talk about different alleles. For instance, there we have a gene that codes for the color of petals. But these are two different um, alleles. The one, of course, it shows us there it codes for red petals. And this gene there, can you see it lies on exactly the same locus of a homologous pair. And this gene is the allele, also codes for, for the color of petals, but in this instance it's yellow. So these different versions of a gene is referred to as alleles. When are they homozygous? If you look at these alleles for yellow, that codes for yellow petals, and we look at the color of the flower, we get yellow. And there, all both of them code for the same, and the offspring will all have red petals. Let's look at heterozygous, Lorraine. Right, there you've got the red petals, the one allele coding for red petals, the other one for yellow petals. Now let's see what the offspring will look like in the phenotype. Ah, oh, so which one was the dominant gene, red or yellow? Right, the one in a heterozygous individual, the characteristic, the allele visible in the phenotype will then be the dominant characteristic. So in this case, the red one. Um, just before we continue, there's a question from Alan from Mount View. He says, what do we call it when we bring in a new plant or animal to mate? What we meant when we said we bring in an outsider was simply to explain to you the progression of generations, that we only talk about an F2 if we interbreed F1. But the moment, let's say we've got two rose plants, they we uh, cross them. Now we've got new rose plants. When we take those rose plants and we cross them, that's the F2 generation. But when I bring one in from Carlin's garden, then I cannot talk about F2. That is what we mean with bringing in a new individual. The rest of the characteristics will still be inherited, or all the characteristics, in the same way. But back to dominant and recessive, the characteristic, or the, the allele, the characteristic visible in the phenotype in a heterozygous individual will be the dominant characteristic. In this case, then the red petals. Right, as we said before, we use capital letters when we um, represent, when it is represented by a dominant allele and a corresponding small letter. Very important, don't use two different letters. We use exactly the same letter, but the recessive allele is represented by a corresponding small letter. And this will then be the characteristics of your genotype. And in this instance, for the heterozygous uh, um, organism, the genotype will be capital R, small r, which means it's heterozygous, or in this instance red, which is dominant, and this is what we mean. Also, it's very important that you know what is meant by Mendel's law of segregation. Now, during a certain process or phase in meiosis, the homologous pair, which is also referred to as the homologs or bivalents, they separate. And in this instance, you see we have a heterozygous organism, two different um, forms of the gene, two different alleles, and during meiosis, they separate, which means that 
Each gamete will have one of the two corresponding alleles and never both. And this is called Mendel's first law of segregation. Make sure that you know these um, definitions as well. Very important for exam purposes. Right. Um, now there's a question, what if you have, um, let's say, two colors. Let's say both red and yellow are dominant. What happens then? Just wait, we will show you. Um, it's, it's still coming. You bear with us and we'll get to that. Yeah, we now can. we've just talked about Mendel's first law of segregation. His second law or another law is the law of independent assortment. Let's see what that means. The alleles for different traits are distributed to sex cells, in other words the gametes and the offspring independently of one another. That means that you don't have that each allele for each characteristic will be, um, will be sorted independently. It means that if me with my blonde hair and brown eyes, it doesn't mean that I will, I know that I've got blue genes because I've got, or, or blue alleles, because I've got blue um, eyes in my family. It doesn't mean that the brown gene will, or the brown allele must go with the blonde hair, must go with being short, must go with having a spotty skin or whatever. Each gene, its alleles, will be inherited independently from other genes. And I think also, and maybe it's, it's easier for them to mm -hmm. remember if we talk about independent, also random assortment. Yeah. If we look at that word randomly, it doesn't matter, especially when you go back to meiosis, you can see that when the homologs, when they um, sort themselves on the equator, it doesn't matter where some of, there might be more of the father's alleles on the one side and more of the mother's or less of the mother's on the one side. So that gamete will have more characteristics of the father or the mother and that is what is called with independent or random assortment. Yeah, but we'll get to that yeah. once again. Remember, you've done this in school now, so if there's something that we talk about that you're not quite sure, either ask your question or your teacher because you've got your teacher there with you or in class tomorrow and also have a look in your textbook. 